Welcome back to Photoshop. So today we're going to take a look at a different way to make selections. So selections always seem to be an issue inside of photography. And today I'm going to show you how to make a selection using channels. Now channels isn't always the best way to make a selection, but in some cases channels can dramatically improve the ability for Photoshop to make a selection. I got a comment the other day that my selection was too easy and not complicated enough. So my response to that was a photographer would never purposely take a photo when they know they have to make a selection and make it difficult. If I was taking this picture here, I would probably shoot it on a completely black seamless background. And if I had somebody with white hair like this, you're gonna use a white seamless background like this. I would probably try to eliminate the shadow, but when you're trying to make a selection, you don't make it so it's difficult for you to do, so you can be like, oh wow, look how good I am at making a selection. Photoshop is a tool, but the photographer can control what's going on. If you know you have to make a selection, Take a photo to make it so it's easy. Don't go shoot outside where the background color is the same color as the subject's hair. Make things simple. A lot of what you do in photography is understanding how Photoshop works and then taking the photos to make it so it's easier to do. Even a designer isn't gonna go and look on a stock photo website and say, oh my God, this would be really hard to cut out. I'm gonna use this photo. No, they're gonna look for something that's gonna be easy to make a selection out of, not complicated. Give me a second here, I'm gonna show you how to use channels to make a selection inside of Photoshop. We're not actually gonna work on this image, we're gonna work on the other image here. But I'm just gonna talk about this. So channels works like this. So we have channels located right here. If you do not have channels, once again, you just go up to window, make sure that channels is selected and it will pop up. Channels, we have the red, the green, and the blue channel. Now what you're looking for inside of channels is which channel gives you the most contrast between the subject or what you wanna select out and your background. So we look at the red here. Now don't worry about the face being bright because it's not gonna matter. What we're looking for here is this and this. So we have red, we have green, which really made the hair darker, but it also made that a little bit darker, and then blue. So this is dark and this is contrasty. So we'll come back up here, look at red once again, green. I think green actually looks better. And then blue once again. And it doesn't matter which channel you pick. Sometimes you're gonna pick the red, sometimes the green, sometimes the blue. So in this case, if we come to this image and we look at this, remember we're looking for contrast difference. So red is giving us a lot of bright whites and a dark background. Green is giving us darker hair, which we don't want, and blue is giving us really dark hair. So in this image, we wanna use the red, and in this image, we wanted to use the green. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make a selection here. Now, once you have figured out which channel works the best for you, what you're gonna do is duplicate that channel. So in this case, we're gonna take this red and we're gonna drop it down on this little plus icon and it's gonna give us the new red copy. And this is what we're gonna to use to make our selection. The next thing I'm gonna do here is increase the contrast of the image. Now you could use brightness contrast, you could use curves, you could use levels. I'm just gonna use curves because that's what I use. Now you wanna do this destructively. You don't wanna make an adjustment layer. You wanna come up here and go to image adjustment and then just go ahead and pick one of these. So I can come up here and just pick my contrast. And then I come down here and I can slide my contrast over like that. I'm increasing my contrast, which is what I want. I want this to be darker and this to be brighter. I'll just go ahead and apply that. Then I'm just gonna hit Command M because that is curves. Command L is levels. And what I'm gonna do is I just wanna make this brighter. I'm just, remember, I'm trying to increase my contrast. And I can come over here and I can increase this contrast. We're just trying to make the whites whiter and the darks darker. 
Now you don't want to do it too much. So let's zoom in here a little bit. Hit OK, then we're going to zoom in. And what's going to happen is right here are these hairs, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Command M again. I don't want to do this so much that these hairs start to fall apart. They're looking pretty good. But if they start to fall apart and get jaggy, you definitely want to kind of stop what you're doing. So don't go too far that you can see now, see where it's starting jaggy apart. You don't want to do that. You want to keep it contrasty, but you want it to make sure the hair is kind of sticking and staying together. We'll just go ahead and do that. So this is looking pretty good. In this image, we've got really strong whites and really strong blacks. Now to make your selection, all you need to do is either hold your command for a Mac or control for a PC and then click on the layer. And that's going to make a selection of your image. Now you can see right in here, it's, it's definitely not selecting some of these darker areas and we definitely want those to be selected. That's not a big deal. We're eventually gonna turn this into a mask and we can just paint those areas in. It's not a huge deal. So we've made a selection using this channel mixer. Now you can also, out of this, you can also, in this channel, come over here with your selection tool and just hit select subject. And it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna use this image here to select out our subject. So once again, we've made that selection. If you would like, you can also use select and mask. So we can click on select and mask. And then I can come in here and change my selection using select and mask as well. So I can scroll up here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn smart radius on. I'm gonna switch over to the refine edge tool change my brush size again, and then I'm just gonna paint over it and try to pick up those bits of hair that it has been missing. And then I'm gonna enlarge this. We're gonna go over these areas right here where it's kind of not selecting that well. And then we'll come over here and get these little bits. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna output this as a selection. Now I could do this as a layer mask as well. We can either do it as a selection or a layer mask. In the end, it's not gonna make a difference because we're gonna turn it into a layer mask now anyways. And so we can just click back on RGB and then I'm gonna go ahead and click a layer mask. It is always helpful if before you start this process, you wanna go ahead and duplicate that layer. For this tutorial, we're not gonna go ahead and do that. And now I've got this image cut out. Now you can see some gray in these kind of semi-transparent areas, that fringing and all that kind of crazy stuff. Always going to happen in Photoshop. It does a really good job, but in those areas, it's going to out some funky things. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to drag this below. And the reason I'm doing this below is because we want to put a background layer on here because Right now we have translucent and it's a little bit difficult to see what's going on. You're also gonna see how well your cutout looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit shift delete, which is my command. I'm gonna pick a color and we'll come in here and just pick her lip color. That's gonna be fine. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay, okay. And it's gonna fill in this background layer. And now you can really see this kind of ugliness and nastiness that we have inside of this image. Now we want to get rid of this is what happens is it's picking up the wrong color. We've made the selection, but it's picking up some of the white and some of the black in the background of that image. So what I'm going to do is kind of divide this image in half. I'm going to adjust and fix this side and not touch this side. And what that's going to allow us to do is kind of see the background image. And if you see this red copy up here in your channels, don't even worry about it anymore. This was just used to make the selection. That's all we are going to do with it. So the next thing that we need to do is come up in here and go into our image, not the mask. Do not want to use the mask. You definitely want to use the image. We're going to go ahead and grab our clone stamp tool. And remember the clone stamp works like this. You need to select an area that you want to clone from. So I'm holding the Alt Option key. It turns into that target and I click with my mouse. Now we've made a target. Now what I'm gonna do now is kind of paste. It doesn't matter if I click out here because we're bound by the mask. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of go like that. And you can see then I'm cloning that white into that gray. So I'm just go like that. that. Just kind of cloning this. Now this is pretty easy to do because 
it's just all plain white. So you can see now I've gotten rid of all that gray that existed over here by doing this cloning. We're gonna do the same thing in the hair. So we've got these like semi-transparent areas. You can see right here is a little bit of stuff where it kind of missed up. Now this, you have to be a little bit more exact when you're doing this. You wanna pick or clone hair that's basically the same color and going the same direction. So you're just, I'm just not gonna clone at one point and they go whoop all the way around because that's not gonna work. I'm gonna go clone, paste, clone, paste, clone, paste, like that. I'm gonna do that again, so we're gonna clone, paste. We're gonna make this a little bit smaller, too big. Don't do it that big. So we'll go and we'll just do a little bit of area at a time. And remember, I'm trying to change these gray hairs, not this inside hair. I kind of messed that up right there. So if you do something and it, it makes it look worse, just go back a step and, and redo it. We're gonna come up here, trying to outside here. And this is gonna take you a little bit. This doesn't happen instantaneously. We're just constantly retargeting and pasting. And I'm trying to hit that outside hair, not this inside hair. And I'll just hold my space bar so I can move. And once again, we're just gonna come out here. We're just trying to change the color of that from that weird gray color to normal hair color. And we'll just assume that that looks pretty good. So we're gonna zoom back out. And you can see this has made this a whole lot better. Now we do need to come in here and kind of refine and work on this. And we're gonna come in here. Hair takes probably the most to retouch of anything. These stray hairs just don't look good. So a lot of this I'm going to clone or cut out of this image. So I would probably come in here. There's a million different ways because this is just a solid color background. All we would need to do here is just kind of pick a color and then come in here and just paint it out. Remember we're just doing, so we're just gonna come in here and paint hair out slowly. You don't wanna do, you wanna make sure you do a good job so it looks realistic. And then you're just gonna come, you can go all the way to the edge, you can lose, leave a little bit of it. Just kind of depends on what you want to do, but you're going to come in here and get some of that stray hair that's just never going to look good no matter what you do. I don't usually remove it all totally. When I'm doing this, I'm usually using what you can see now, sort of a smaller, harder brush. If you do too soft of a brush, it, it kind of blends and bleeds over and doesn't look real good. So you're just going to go around the whole hair and it, it takes a while and you're going to go ahead and clean that up. And that is how you use Channel Mixer to help you make a selection inside of Photoshop and get a really nice cutout where you don't have any fringing in the end and issues. And this way we can stick it right on any color background that we want and it's always gonna look good. Well, found this video helpful. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.